congratulations on your 100th show. Thank you so much. <laughs> My goodness, you are, um, I, when I think about you, I think of that scripture, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. You're a completer. What you've done since March 2020 blows me away. And you're an activator. You really make things happen. I'm so proud of you. So this is what I think, Yvette. Someone, a good interviewer needs to interview you. <laughs> I, no, I'm serious. Listen to me. You need to be a guest on your own podcast. Wow. Because you have a way of breaking through and making things happen. I'm so inspired by you and respect so much how you've, and, and then I listen to what you got planned next. I'm exhausted. So I'm not exhausted. I'm thrilled for you. But I do think you find a good interviewer. I'm not. I just, um, I've listened. I've got a favorite, another favorite podcast. It's called Pastor Writer. Mm. And he's an amazing interviewer. Every time I'm thinking of something to ask, he ends up, not that my questions are so good, but he really asks some really good questions. So I'm not, I'm going to quit babbling, but I really want to encourage you to find someone who will interview you on a show. And you can tell them it was one of your guests who requested. I will. I will. That's, that's really a great idea. I had never, I mean, I've guested on other people's shows. I've done an, an Instagram live with a pretty mm. good interviewer, mm -hmm. um, but I never actually thought about that. So thank you. Well, well, first yeah. of all, Mary Jo, thank you. You have inspired me so much, mm. you and your <laughs> books. I love your books. Um, and um, it just made sense that when I wanted to celebrate, I'm celebrating all this week. And you know I what? I mean, I'm celebrating in the next week too, because it's International I, Podcasting Day should. next week. So I am. But I thought we've got to have her back because you, what you do is just so inspirational and so unique. I love your role as intercessor. Mm -hmm. And I think so, I, we need that in this world so much. Someone whose whole life surrounds prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the title of, of the first book that I read from you, Adventures in Prayer. And then, of course, there's the beautiful Follow Me. Oh, thank you so Which, much. by the way, I'm including in the prize package giveaway. I saw that. I'm yes. getting ready. Yes. I saw yes. that. Yes. I saw now, that. I've got my own copy. They can't have my copy, but I had an extra copy. <laughs> well, to your point, and if, if you ever did want to do a giveaway and I could some way participate in that, be sure and let me know. But um, to your point about intercession, I've, um, I've been on assignment for 17 and a half years at a local church. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's just been prompting, but you know what, to be, if, to be on assignment, whether you're an intercessor, whether you're a teacher, whether you have a heart for evangelism, whether you're whatever, wherever God's got you planted and you're flourishing or you're growing and whatever your gifts are to get, to do it wholeheartedly. There's never a time in church history in our lifetime and more that it's not so it's imperative that we're at the right place at the right time using our gift to the fullest. So back to you, I see you doing that. But inter intercession is um, near and dear to God's heart for me and my heart for the Lord. And, and something that I have begun to do, because our life gets crazy busy, at least for me. Um, so first of all, every Thursday on the Facebook community, um, I have, I mean, we should pray every day, but you know how it is. So I have prayer Thursday okay. on the Facebook community and I encourage people to put their prayer requests in the comments and I pray over them, but I actually write it out and post it. Mm. I do it publicly because number one, I do it right then in the moment mm -hmm. so that I, so that I won't get busy and not do it. Right. But I feel like it's important for people, other people to read those prayers out. Yes. And I do the same thing when and someone like a good friend of mine, she texts me for prayers. And I'm like, OK, let's let's pray right now, God. And I type it out mm -hmm. because if I don't, I mean, I can do it silently. And of course, he will hear me. 
but I need to do it in the moment. You know, you ask me for prayer. I got to do it right now because the world will creep in and get me busy. So yes, it's something I feel like I need to do then in the moment. It's like keeping a promise. It it is. And I have found that Facebook has, for me personally, um, put that promise into into an integrity issue because it's so easy to use the emoji pray. It's so easy to say, oh, I'm praying for you, Mm -hmm. but for you to be able to stop. So what I'm doing now is like I'm, I'm stopping and I'll write a little prayer to them or I'll write an answer. And Lord, what do you want me to say? How do you want me to encourage them? Or what's your heart for this situation? And so let's continue modeling and mentoring instant prayer. Mm. Also, this decade in the church calendar, or I should say the Jewish calendar, and you know, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I lean in to that pace and rhythm, but this decade of the 80s is pay, P-E-H, and it's words, it's breath, it's voice. And this is the decade where we find our voice being taken from us and fighting to make a place for our voice. So for you to give voice, for you to give words, they are so powerful and they do penetrate the atmosphere and make a difference. So I applaud you. Well, I, I do. I think it's really important. And, and you taught me a lot of that. So thank you. For anyone who doesn't know, and if you don't know, shame on you. You need to go back and listen to that first episode. But Mary Jo has been on the show before and she talked a lot about the wonderful things that she does around her home. And um, I, I, think I, I think I said a word and you hadn't heard that term before, or maybe you had, but I called it holy hospitality. Mm-hmm. And um, what you do in your home is holy hospitality. And you are getting ready to do some, to have your, your weekly celebration tonight. And I, I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about what that is and why Let's you do it. it. Let's do it. Okay. So... so What are you going to be doing in a few hours? Well, tonight in the um, in the Jewish calendar and in the scriptures at sundown, that's Sabbath. And especially since I'm um, working at a church where our weekends are more, um, you know, active and involved and it's more like work, even, you know. So I have adopted the Friday evening sundown in Saturday as my Sabbath. And so if we're going to take a little sidebar if, and pause, I'd like to ask a question to the listeners. What does Sabbath mean to you? And what do you do on this seventh day to make it holy? And how does it look different from your other days? And really challenge all of us to re-examine what Sabbath looks like in our life. You know, it used to be you could hardly find a book on prayer. In the 70s, there were just a few of them, classics in Catherine Marshall. And now there's shelves of them because God has awakened prayer in the church, in people's hearts, the need for prayer, the desire for prayer to draw near to him and he'll draw near to us and call out to me and I will answer you. These have become really part of our lifeline. And so the same's happening for Sabbath. It used to be that it was not something taught about or written about, at least in our uh, Christian world. Well, that's not the case anymore. The churches are awakening, believers are awakening for a real need and a desire for God's rest in our life. Not a day off, not a vacation, not a day at the spa, but a weekly coming aside and reflecting on the goodness of God, the graciousness of God, the presence of God. So um, stop me if you want me to. But this is why, why, as I considered what Sabbath looked like in my life, God uh, introduced me, reintroduced me to my kitchen and what an apron looks like. (laughs) (laughs) And I have, I, listen, I have walked with the Lord for over 45 years and I, this is one of the greatest gifts he's given me. 
He's given me a way to worship him with some elements that end up making bread that end up representing the very presence of God, just like in the Old Testament, where the presence of God was ever before him. It was continually before him. And um, I've just been, been able to breathe that in into different layers of my life. But now, like this morning in my quiet time, I was in Leviticus. I like Leviticus. I mean, I, I, there's parts of it. I love Leviticus because it's all about how to worship him. Yes. And so Leviticus 2 and um, 1 and 2, may I for a minute? Yes, yes. And I'm, I love that you love Leviticus because it's a challenging book it is for many people. Book. It is a challenging book. Uh, if you read it by the spirit, though, if you read it by the spirit, how God wants to be worshipped. And the purity of it and the intentionality of it and, and, and the value that God puts on it. it, it it'll, if you read it with that desire, God's going to start breathing worship into you in a new way. For example, I call my KitchenAid my guitar <laughs> because when I'm in my kitchen, I'm worshiping. When I'm making bread, um, I'm going to share. Whoop. I'm bouncing a little bit, but I want to share a text that I just got um, about an hour ago. I wanted to tell you about my Hala experience. I've been feeling so defeated, tired, and worn out. It's been life in a full plate at work. And this morning, I woke up defeated again, just couldn't shake it. My husband went to work and the kids went to school in about 30 minutes before my first meeting. I felt like the Lord said, make holla. It's been several months because life's been so busy and I've been so tired. Doesn't this sound like our address lately? Yeah. So I got to it. And as I was rolling and braiding, my eyes were filled with tears and my heart was filled with so many thoughts about the goodness of God in my life and my family's life. Even when I'm tired and defeated feeling, my literal tears are in the bread today, and it speaks more to my heart than I can ever put to words. And not so much my brain, and not just that, my brain has so much going on in there, and I felt so much peace, and the things that felt fuzzy felt clear as I needed and braided. I wanted to, she thanked me for passing it on. Uh, but the point I want to say is it's way more than just making bread. It's how the God speaks to me in ways that I need. Today was special. So I want to say for me, it's bread. And we're talking about Shabbat and challah and bread's the communion, one of the elements of the meal. But let me just enlarge it because many of your listeners are men and women that are not home in the kitchen. But I want to encourage every listener. In fact, can I pray for them right now? Yes. Lord, I know Sabbath is a time of rest. You're ordained, anointed, pulling aside, holy day of rest. Wrapped up in that, Lord God, is worship. And I pray for every listener, Lord, that you would begin tugging at their heart at what worship looks like in their life. What activity would be worship, would be holy to the Lord, would be a love offering, would be a grain offering to the Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, give them expression, give them creativity, and then, Lord, give them the self-discipline to pull aside and make it part of the pace and rhythm of their life. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. for that. Mm -hmm. So in Leviticus... It says, when you present a grain offering to the Lord, use fine flour. Well, fine is sifted flour. And you may feel very sifted by the end of the week. <laughs> right? Yes. But sometimes even in that sifting and in these circumstances that, are, that press us during the week, God's sifting and he's bringing um, the best of him is what we want to offer. So we let him sift our hearts and circumstances, our minds, our thoughts, our words. And then it says, pour oil on it. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit engage. And then it says, put incense on it. 
Well, we're talking about prayer because the bowls of the saints are filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And that's what tips over and brings God's will to earth as it is in heaven. Goes on to say the priest took a handful of the fine flour and oil and incense, and he burnt it on the altar as a memorial to God. So that, in a lot of words, is a part of the joy of it, my adventures in baking. <laughs> That's your next book, right? <laughs> well, it's going to be part of it. It's going to be part of it. The next, the next book is prayer practices engaging God in your everyday. Mm, love it. Yeah. So that's a little insight into Sabbath, the value of it, the intentionality of it, God's heart for us. So I have one more thing I'd like to say about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more I want to say, but I want to give you an opportunity if you've got something else on your heart. But here's one of the hidden blessings in Sabbath. Besides the rest, the Jewish people have a meal on Friday night dedicated to the Lord. There's something different and special and unique about that meal. And in that, during their traditional activities around the meal, there's lighting of candles, which I consider worship, inviting the presence of God, the light of the world in. There's prayer where they lift up the elements and they take the bread and the uh, juice that represents the wine and they pray for the coming Messiah. We come to the altar, we lift up bread and wine and we thank God as we take in the very sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. And then another element is the blessing. And this is what I'd like to underscore the blessing is an opportunity for the, and I'm talking about a a family now that has a father and a mother and some children, but you can, you can add this, you can take this and apply it to single parents, college students, whatever. Okay. But there's a blessing where the father blesses the wife, usually with Proverbs 31, but around the table every week, the children hear the father honor the mother. Mm. It changes the atmosphere in the home because the power of the words and the power of a blessing and the wife receives the blessing from her husband. And then there's a blessing for the children. And the, the miracle of, of the blessing. You know, we know number six, the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his light to shine upon you. And we hear those words, those benedictions, and they bless us. It's the heart of God for us. Well, here in the blessing part of the uh, Shabbat meal is the father blessing the children. I have seen and heard testimonies of families, fragmented families coming back together again because they have heard their father's blessings. Uh, One quick testimony is I read about a Holocaust victim and what kept her during the most difficult times in the camp was the memory of her father placing his hands on her head and blessing her. So wrapped up in this wonderful Sabbath blessing from the Lord, this is this gathering around the table and these elements of worship and prayer and bless. And then my fourth element is enjoy, because God wants us to enjoy him and each other. So, my friend, that is over the abundance of my heart, the cream of how I feel about Sabbath and the hollow bread and the whole experience and how it's transformed my life. Oh, wow. So, so wonderful. I can see you beaming. I mean, I, I, I can see you beaming. Um, I. I have to say that you and and your writing has helped me understand uh, and wh- why intercession is important and and how prayer can can be simple and you shouldn't be afraid of it. Um, I was 
I was uncomfortable praying out loud mm. um, in previous years, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I will say that my husband has been, you know, really integral in encouraging me to How pray wonderful. out loud. So that was wonderful. But I'm going to take this idea of blessing wife and husband back to him because we don't do that. And I think that would be awfully cool. Isn't that powerful? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think so. Yeah. I, I need to. Um, yeah. I need to give it to more words, but we'll leave it at that. It's it's so powerful. And sometimes my husband reads the entire um, Pro- Proverbs 31. And I'm thinking to myself, that's a long Proverbs and that's taken a lot of time. Could you pick a verse? <laughs> and you know what? While I'm thinking that in my little my unsanctified mind, I'm watching the couples around the table and a tear comes to the woman's eye and the husband reaches over under the table and he takes her hand Mm -hmm. and they're being washed by the word. And so there's so many ways that God will orchestrate people go, how do you do it? And so how do you do your Sabbath meal? How do you do Shabbat? It's like, it's like eating an elephant one bite at a time. It's just a concept that people haven't really, um, thought or processed. And I just said to them, and I say, to me, there are four elements of the gathering. Worship, pray, bless, and enjoy. However that looks in your life. I have friends who live by themselves, but they will do a worship, pray, bless, and enjoy. Mm. And if you have those four elements at a special meeting with the Lord, Worship, pray, bless, and enjoy. And however God has you do it. I play a, I play a song by my favorite worship, um, Jewish Messianic worship leader, um, Marty Getz. And he has a song called, um, it's a Shabbat greeting. It's in Hebrew and it's so beautiful. And then he says, let your glory fall. And just feel the presence of God. It just mm-hmm. changes and you know what? When we pause and do this, God's got some miracles he wants to do in this world where we feel less safe. I don't want to speak for everybody, but in this world where I feel less safe, less safe outside my doors, God is giving us an opportunity to create a safe place for us to meet with him that fills us up and um, gives us the the uh, the spirit of God that we can go outside the door and do what we need to do to be that light and salt. Does that make sense, Yvette? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know and I know we've we've talked uh you know via email and we've talked about even how Times have changed and there were times when we could not have people over and there were times when we could not even be with our families, but you could still perform this Shabbat celebration and maybe celebration is not right word, but worship. It is. Yeah. I I think it's a celebration. Yeah. It is. It it is. And like you said, you may even be biased yourself and do it. Yes. Um, Yeah. I, I think, I think prayer is so important and more important than ever and I know that there's people out there, somebody's out there right now, just they don't know how to do it. They're uncomfortable. I know a woman and I've been just, we've been coaching and encouraging her mm. to pray, pray, just, just pray out loud. It's okay. It doesn't matter what you say. It's, you know, he's not, he, his heart is going to be touched. Just you making the effort, you know, but there's people out there who just, they don't know what to say. And the one thing I've learned, and I'd love your take on this, is just just read scripture out loud. That's it. That's it. Yeah. There's, two, there's two things. One, we're intimidated. Prayer can be intimidating. And one of the Achilles heels to a person's prayer life is when they compare their prayer life to other people's. Mm-hmm. And scripture says not to compare. And, you know, each one of us, you know, there's that song um, that uh, hallelujah song. I heard there was a special chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Yeah. I want to tell you, listeners, 
You have a special chord. You have a special sound. God recognizes your va- your voice above the voices of the multitudes. He recognizes your voice. He knows your voice. And so if we cannot compare ourselves to other people's prayer lives, but recognize the, um, um, you know, you text a lot. But yeah. every so this week, you know, we're texting and I picked up the phone. And I said, I just needed to hear your voice. So I can journal and I can have these internal prayers with the Lord. But sometimes he just wants to hear my voice. I encourage people to sit in their prayer chair, get in their car when they're alone and practice it. Prayer is a spiritual discipline. We were created to pray. Practice it. And what happens when you practice it? Two things. When you're reading scripture out loud. So you read a scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, Lord, the whole idea that you're my shepherd and that you will lead me. And I feel like such a lost sheep. In fact, I feel like one of those black sheep. In fact, I feel like you would leave the 99 and come find me. So if you can start out and use scripture as a prompt, Mm -hmm. as just a launch, then the spirit of God takes over. And that's when it's, you know how the spirit prays through you, Romans 8, 26. Always making intercession and praying. for That's what he's doing. He's stirring up that prayer in you. And then prayer also edifies a person. Because when, when you're praying, it's a supernatural connection. You're not praying to a lamp. <laughs> you know, you're not praying to an object. You're praying to a living, breathing God. And so when you're praying to him, you start feeling his presence. So I feel like I'm going to transition just a little bit. Do you mind? Please. It's about prayer. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people say, what do you do when you get in your prayer chair? You know, should it be an hour? Should I worship for five minutes and then... Um, do I have to journal and and they get confined or restricted or intimidated even by the how's to or what's to? Yeah. And I was talking to the Lord about it last year. And I asked him if he wanted to breathe fresh life into my, you know, you get into a little routine, you know, get up, you know, early and you get them upstairs. And I said, so. You know, is there anything you want to reset about our time together? Because I don't want any anything to get stale or religious. And I felt like I was kind of putting him in a box. So this is what he said. He gave me three steps. He said, when you come and meet with me, I want you to be fully present. And if that takes you 30 minutes so be it. I can wait. Mm -hmm. And you start teaching yourself how to be fully present, how to leave your care, you know, things, the to-do list or the hurt or the wound, you know, how you can kind of put those on the shelf and be fully present. Like you and I are right now. I mean, we have to be fully present. It's just you and me right now, (laughs) a lot of (laughs) listeners to come, but, you know, I'm not doing different things. Mm -hmm. So if we can do it for each other, so be fully present. The second thing he said is, I want to be fully present. Ah. So I'm there. And now what he wanted to do was. Allow me to be fully present and learn what his presence felt like. Mm -hmm. So one time, you know, I've got that, my hugging Bible, it's a big Bible and I hug it, it's my size. And, and so one time I put my Bible on my lap and just the weight of my Bible 
God was fully present. Mm -hmm. I, I could sense his presence. And sometimes a thought will come into your mind when you're fully present. And you start experiencing a, a warmth, a love of God, a, a peace that you didn't have 15 minutes ago. The Lord wants us to so recognize his presence that when we leave our tent of meeting, when we leave our time with God, when we go out into the busy, crazy world, which sometimes is, you know, downstairs or <laughs> in, in the next room, he wants us to be able to carry that presence with us and have it keep us in times and whatever the day brings. And then he wants us to give it away. Mm -hmm. He wants the overflow of his presence. I mean, you, you, you have that. You have an overflow of his presence. I, I see it. So the third thing is that the Lord said, I want you to leave when you're fully satisfied. That does not mean your prayers have been answered. That doesn't mean that you've journaled all that you needed to journal. That doesn't mean that all you, what that means is there'll be a settling. There'll be an aha where you sense this time with the Lord is sealed. And it's over. Mm -hmm. And then you take that fully satisfied with you. I leave my prayer room frequently without an answer to prayer. But I leave satisfied. So Psalm 1715 is my life verse. And it's, I will be fully satisfied when I awake in the morning, seeing you face to face and having sweet communion with you. And that's the heart of it. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it really is. Wow, this is, well, you know, I mean, this has been wonderful. I normally, as I told you before, I normally speak to you uh, from, from my studio slash craft room. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually here at work right now. And you have just given me, I still have a few hours left of my day. Mm -hmm. And you have just, you know, given me comfort and satisfaction just through our conversation. I'm so, so glad. Yeah, yeah. And I hope that certainly happens for everyone who listens to this. I do too. Yes, yes. Mary Jo, thank you so much. Now everyone, uh, Mary Jo Pierce, you can find her on her website. You can find her uh, on social media. She has a YouTube video that uh, called Begin With Bread which I've seen several times. I love it. Um, and look for her new book. When the book comes out, we'll have to talk again. Okay. I would love it. And okay, before good. I say goodbye, I want to congratulate you on your hundredth um, show. I'm, I'm so in awe and inspired by your um, willingness to just go forward and, you know, get the obstacles out of the way and just do what God's put on your heart to do. And I know that it's just the beginning for you, Yvette. You're a joy to be with, and you bless everybody that has an opportunity to spend time with you. So God bless you, and congratulations. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.